So these are the tuk-tuks just outside our hotel. We've done some negotiating, so 2,000 rupiah, which is about seven pounds for like a five hour tour. And off we go. Follow that tuk-tuk. So, thank you. Should be a 20 minute journey to the botanical garden. Just one ticket, please. Thank you. Thank you. So it says on my uh, little guidebook that I got as part of the ticket price that it dates from 1371 when a Candian king came and he used it for his little uh, little park. And the British came, of course, and they turned it into a botanical garden. Um, and apparently there's 4,000 species of plant in this garden. Do we want to go to the flower garden or the double coconut avenue? Double coconut avenue sounds good. I wonder why they put numbers on them. This is the Gardner monument. Whether it's named after a gardener or a person called Gardner, I don't know. I want to head down there to the lake. Well, this is very nice, isn't it? Ooh, look at all the terrapins scuttling back into the sea. Look at the bamboo. And just beyond it, a river. No doubt full of uh, reptiles. Uh, for those of you who've been following my story about why I'm in Sri Lanka, which was because I couldn't enter Indonesia where I work until I'd spent 14 days out of the UK. Well, the Indonesian government announced yesterday that things have changed. I can go straight back into Indonesia, but unfortunately I can't get on an earlier flight. Plus the quarantine hotels back in Jakarta are full. So I am uh, flying out of Sri Lanka next Thursday. It's Saturday today. So I'll be flying out next Thursday. So I have only got another five or six days left in Sri Lanka, which is a real shame. So I'm really enjoying it. Right, I'm coming to something which on the map is called the Great Circle and it actually looks like a great circle. Uh, yeah, I wonder what it was used for. Maybe cricket? I don't know. Right, so there's the entrance and I walked up the uh, coconut thing, went to the, to, the, to the lake, back around here. There's the great circle. I'm going to head over here to something that looks like a suspension bridge. Ah, the suspension bridge. There you go. I thought it was going to be a massive suspension bridge, but it's like just a walkway one. Every time I come here, there's just more people. And only six people are allowed it on at any one time, and there's people come from the direction, so I think I'll have to leave it. Shame. So I'm going to go down here and see the uh, river instead. Maybe spy on a few more monkeys, because there's loads of them. They're all just playing. It's like the nursery area. A few adults just uh, watching over them. Okay, I'm off to something called the Orchid House which contains a captivating display, it says, of exotic blooms, including the largest orchid in the world. Look how grand this is. I think it's the Royal Palm Avenue. Look at this tree behind me. Look at those things dangling from it. I've never seen a tree like that in my life before. So it's from Madagascar and Guyana. Cannonball. Yeah, they look like cannonballs, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. on the ground. I wonder what the fruit was like inside them. Wow, they are heavy. They are heavy duty things. Jesus. Do you want one of those dropping on your head? Right, after the fun of the cannonball tree, we finally reached the orchid house. Now, I know that an orchid is a type of flower, but I don't know what makes an orchid an orchid. But here are some. Ah, orchids are herbs and lack any woody structure. There you go. Nice little water feature in the middle. Ooh, look at that fish there. You look like you mean business, mate. So I've been searching for the largest orchid in the world and I have to guard over there and he just pointed over here. So is it this? But there's no orchid in it. I don't know. 
Right, that's it from the orchid garden. In fact, I might leave the botanical gardens now and go see something else, because I'm boiling. Look at these beautiful flowers though. Goodbye, botanical garden. Goodbye, beautiful flowers. I have come to a tea factory. Let's see the factory. Wow, I can smell tea. Look at this. Going up the conveyor belt. Wow. Well, going upstairs, it feels like a furnace is boiling up here. What's going on? Okay, I will explain the process. This is the first stage in our process. With the process, these are tea leaves. We take only top bud and two or three leaves only. Top bud, this one for extra special black tea and white tea. So this room here, like, it crushes it and then they put it in here to ferment. I think that's what she said. Do you ferment tea? Nearly 20 minutes under 100 Celsius from this. This is very old machine since 1950. Oh, okay, look at this, so they're drying it. It's really heat. Sorry, thank you. Shaking it a bit to get rid of all the uh, unwanted big pieces. So this is like a Victorian workhouse. And then it comes here, and this is the fine tea that you see in packets. So I'm getting to sample some tea now. The lady's arrived. Yes, proper Sri Lankan tea. Um, I've never tried tea in Sri Lanka before, but here in Kandy I'm doing it. it. Tastes like tea. Do you know what? I'm not a tea connoisseur, so I think it's probably wasted on me, but it tastes alright. So I was given the salesh, shown the arrays of teas and the different quantities I could buy, but in the end I uh, went for sal Salon Afternoon Tea, which, which is one that they gave me, a thousand rupiah. At uh, five dollars, so I think I got off quite lightly there. So we've just driven back into sort of candy of this winding pathway. We've ended up here at this Buddha temple, but first of all, I've got to uh, hand my shoes in there. Should I buy a coconut from here, or maybe Hello. that? What is that? Hello. What is this? Candles. Candle, candle. Oh, I see. And there's my uh, shoes. Look at this little kitten. Hello. Hello. Right, up we go the steps, and it's got a really good view of candy from up here. So we'll see that as well. Perfect. Nice monk walking past with his saffron robe. Dog following him. So yeah, I've been to a lot of these temples in Sri Lanka, but I think this one might be the uh, the best Buddha. Look at that. Ingiri siyatn veradunu tanakadi ekatnu pitat vahanni So you can go up and uh, climb onto a viewing platform on the Buddha. See the back of the head. Nice hair. So you can actually go into the Buddha statue. So this is definitely worth a visit for the giant Buddha, for the views, and for these amazing uh, engravings on the wall. So I'm back in the centre of Kandy. It's just really interesting just walking about and seeing daily life going on. Um, people try to sell stuff, make a living, sell the flowers. But I'm walking towards this quite fantastic looking colonial building. So I just stumbled upon a magnificent church. Set against that gorgeous blue background, look at that. Nice little find, just on my wanderings. So it's getting really hot now, um, really sweaty, so I'm gonna head back to the hotel, 
have a little bit of a rest, cool off, and then later on head back out and see the Temple of the Tooth, which is just over there. So it's 6 p.m., the sun's about to go down, and we're gonna go and see the Temple of the Tooth, finally. We need long trousers on, so we need to buy some sort of a sarong or something. Here we go, sarong fitted. I've gone for the orange one. Right, in we go. Male entrance, female entrance. Thank you. So there, the Temple of the Tooth, part of the former royal palace. Um, and whoever had access to a relic of the Buddha's tooth held the power of the land. That's why it was so important. There was wars fought over it and people tried to invade this place to get their hands on that Buddha's tooth. But it was kept in there and it's in there now. There's not that we'll ever even see it because it's behind a curtain, but we might be able to see the curtain of the tooth. Let's find out. <laughs> people and come here but we're not even sure what's going on. Right we've moved on to the new shrine room, whatever that is. I think if we had a map of what we we're actually seeing it would be much better but we're just wandering around aimlessly uh, not really knowing, not knowing if this is significant or just a minor temple or a minor shrine. Um, it's all very beautiful though, but it seems a bit random. This looks uh, visually exciting with all the uh, candles burning. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Well, let's go in here. Might as well, seeing as we're here now. Oh wow, a bit like a stuffed elephant. Is this when it was alive? And so this was captured, this elephant was captured in the jungle in 1925. And then it worked for the president and they called it Tusker. And it was regarded as a national treasure. And then for the next 50 years, she worked tirelessly for the president um, in official functions and things, and then died in 1988. So that's it, the Temple of the Tooth finished. Uh, my tour of candy's finished. So we're gonna head back to the hotel and tomorrow we head back to Colombo. So see you next time on my Sri Lankan adventure.